The head of Greater Manchester Police has apologised for the first time to the family of Anthony Granger, an unarmed man who was shot dead in a car by one of its armed police officers. A public inquiry yesterday found the force was to blame after serious failings in its firearms unit. Detectives believed Mr Granger and two others were planning to hold up a supermarket and had access to firearms. No weapons were found in the car. In a highly critical report, a judge said the police had been cavalier and that they had collated flawed intelligence during a botched operation that led to Anthony Granger's death. We first brought you this story in 2017 when we ran an investigation into Greater Manchester Police's firearms unit. In a moment, we will speak to Anthony Granger's partner, Gail, but first, here's a clip of the film by Simon Cox. Anthony Granger was 36. He had two young children and worked as a car mechanic. He lived in Manchester with his partner, Gail. And I remember just going back and actually sitting there and thinking, my life's perfect, I actually remember. And then, um, then he nipped out and he didn't, didn't, didn't come on. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A man was shot dead last night in Cheshire after the car he was in was stopped by officers from Greater Manchester Police in a pre-planned operation. It happened in the village of Culcheth near Warrington. Two men were arrested at the scene. The victim was Anthony Granger. He'd been found guilty of handling stolen cars, but had no convictions for violence. The other men in the car were a different story. They did have convictions for violence, and the police saw one as a very dangerous criminal. It was early Saturday evening back in March 2012 when armed officers swooped into this car park in unmarked cars. They were aiming for the corner, which is where Anthony Granger was sitting in the driver's seat. And what happened next is disputed. The police say that when they got here, Anthony had raised and then lowered his arms. They were worried that he was going for a gun. So one of the officers had fired a shot and killed him. But we've talked to one of the other passengers in the car they said there was no warning, they didn't know it was armed police. The first thing they knew was a shot had come through the windscreen and had killed Anthony. What is clear is that Anthony Granger didn't have a gun, neither did anyone else in the car. About half past seven, eight o'clock in the morning, I were, there was somebody knocking on the door. So I've come out and I've opened the door and I thought he'd forgot his keys. And it was one of his friends and his friend just stood there looking at me. And he just went, it's, it's been shot. I thought, what do you mean, been shot? So, you know, we, don't, we don't live in America. And then he said the police did it. And I just, just collapsed. Um, but I didn't, I didn't believe it, even, even up until I seen his body. Well, you saw there Gail Hadfield Granger. She says that Greater Manchester Police had failed to apologise for Anthony's death, even after yesterday's damning report. She called them out on that yesterday morning outside the court. In seven years, but today some justice has been done. This devastating report shows that, that Anthony's death was caused by a litany of catastrophic failures by Greater Manchester Police in 2012. And it could have, and it should have been prevented. The inquiry is also exposed that even now in 2012, the Greater Manchester Police is unfit to control firearms operations. This is a scandal which places other people's lives at risk. We've waited seven years for an apology from the Chief Constable but yet we're still waiting. Well, that was yesterday morning, yesterday evening, when being interviewed by the BBC, Greater Manchester Police Chief Constable Ian Hopkins did offer a personal apology to the family. He said, our failings have led to Anthony Granger's death and caused unimaginable harm to his family. For that, I am sincerely sorry. Well, we can speak now to Gail Hadfield Granger, Anthony Granger's partner. Gail, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. How do you react, first of all, to that apology, which did finally come last night? I'm a little bit shocked that it's taken seven years, four months and eight days to apologise, but I welcome the apology. And, I'm, and if it is a sincere apology and he does accept the criticisms in this report, then 
now, I think, is the time for change. He has also said he would like to meet you and the family personally. Has that offer come through to you in a direct way yet? And would you like to meet him? Uh, I received that offer this morning through my legal team. And that is definitely something I would like to do. I would also like to meet the Home Secretary as well and find out exactly what he proposes to do to make these changes. Yesterday, Anthony's mother, Marina, said that the inquiry revealed levels of staggering ineptitude way beyond what was expected, even in the intelligence, the operation and the post-incident collusion. As you have gone on over these seven years, culminating in what happened yesterday, how have you felt every step of the way when you've learned more and more about what happened? I think one thing that, that has really stood out to me, we've had the documents that the, the judge had as well, which has been handed by Greater Manchester Police. So we have seen these failures, we've seen these, these cover-ups, we've seen that they're trying to pervert the course of justice, we've, we've seen all this kind of thing. So to sit and listen to the judge actually come out and say it in open court for the Greater Manchester Police to actually have to hear and actually have to listen to and realise that this can't be something, this, this can't go on, it can't go on. The Greater Manchester Police Firearms Unit, it's, it isn't fit for purpose, it really does need to be a full shake-up and I hope this report is going to do that. Um, the, the police issued a statement yesterday on behalf of the force saying we do undertake to consider each and every one of the chairman's findings and criticism with the utmost care, attention and reflection. We will consider all of the recommendations and assess what more can be done now and in the future to further improve the safety of firearms operations. Is that enough? Do you trust the force? Um, when they returned back to court in 2018, they actually made a statement saying that they don't need to learn lessons. It's actually printed in the report because the judge found it quite shocking too. They stated that they don't need to learn lessons because the lessons have already been learnt. But I think what, what this report does show is that there's so much more that they need to learn, so much more action that they need to take. And it shouldn't take another seven years for this action to be implemented. It needs to be done now, what needs to strike while the iron's hot. These changes need to be made to make people safe on the streets of Manchester. I know that for you, you have been, I mean, obviously, you have been grieving. You've been through a terrible personal trauma. You have also, during the course of the time that has unfolded since Anthony was shot dead, you've studied for two law degrees and obviously spent a lot of time and, and money doing that. Why did you decide to do that? Initially, I was finding it very hard to understand all the legal jargon, the next steps and... I wanted to give this, this whole inquiry and this fight the best possible fighting chance that I could. And the way that I felt that I could do that would be by studying the law and seeing what is right and what is wrong. Because sometimes the public, as they, don't, they have a different outlook on what's right and wrong as to the police, which is understandable. Um, so for me, I've done this because I, I want to give this the best fighting chance. And then I want to go on to help prevent this from happening again in the future. And do you think it has made a difference in fighting for justice for Anthony? Given the apologies today that we received, I feel like we have done everything that we possibly could. And I do want to thank my legal team. Um, they have left no stone unturned and they've been so supportive and they've done absolutely everything and inquest as well. And I think one thing that I would like to put out is that if somebody has to go through what we've gone through as a family, the first steps that they need to take is to contact Inquest. Uh, they're so knowledgeable and they, do, they, do, they are there to help. Um, you've said, obviously, that you want operational changes in the police. I know that you would also like to see mans corporate manslaughter charges brought against Greater Manchester Police. Tell us more about what you would like to see. So ideally, I would like to see um, corporate manslaughter charges brought to the whole of GMP um, and I would like the Home Office and the Home Secretary to actually sit down and state what it is that he is going to do. Um, this, is, this is a major, major report. There's major failings in it throughout. I think the term failure or failed is used over 200 times in the report in regards to GMP's operations and the way that they deal with intelligence and briefings and absolutely everything. So it is... I would like to see these massive changes making being made. I would like to see systemic changes being made and I would like to see lessons, not only lessons to be learned, 
because we can all learn a lesson, but it's actually putting that learning into practice. And you said that you want to meet the, the Home Secretary. Uh, have you made, had any successful contact there? Um, my legal team is working around the clock to ensure that this meeting happens, not only for me, um, but also for other bereaved families that have had to go through the same kind of ordeal. Gail Hadfield-Granger, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.